Ischemic heart disease is a pretty broad term that encompasses a range of syndromes, both acute and chronic. There's going to be one uniting theme throughout this chapter, though. A mismatch between myocardial oxygen demand and coronary oxygen supply. It's all about oxygen. You see, just like a medieval forge needs that sweet, sweet flow of oxygen in order to keep the flame going, just look at that thing glow. Cardiac myocyte function is dependent on a constant flow of oxygen provided by the coronary arteries. In fact, cardiac myocytes generate energy almost exclusively through oxidative phosphorylation, hence the oxidative forge. These myocytes extract a higher percentage of oxygen in passing blood than any other tissue in the body. They just soak it up. On an exam, they might even ask you something like, which vein has the most deoxygenated blood? The answer is the coronary sinus. That's where all the blood ends up after the cardiac myocytes are done extracting oxygen. During times of physical exertion, like a marathon, for example, or if you're like me, a strenuous walk between my refrigerator and the ongoing League of Legends match on my gaming PC, though it's more of a kind of shuffling, rolly chair roll. Look, who are you, my mom? Anyways, that extra surge of sympathetic activity to the myocytes causes increased heart rate and contractility. And that means a several-fold increase in myocardial oxygen demand. The only way to meet that demand is to increase blood flow. See that big dilated red exhaust pipe? Think of it as a coronary artery. Maintaining the proper flow of oxygen to the forge that is your cold, stony medieval heart. To increase oxygen delivery, it needs to dilate. Coronary endothelial cells are responsible for the production of nitric oxide, a gaseous molecule that works locally to promote vasodilation. Follow those gaseous exhaust particles down to the corner of the sketch, and you'll see our recurring GMP grump. Nitric oxide increases cyclic GMP inside arteriolar smooth muscle cells. 